All right, for this pro tip, I'm going to talk about how to combine index and match functions to serve as a more flexible lookup. Now, this is a four star formula tip, definitely a little bit more advanced. Now, if you're not comfortable with the fundamentals of lookup functions or index and match, keep in mind you may have a hard time following along here. Maybe worth going back and taking some of those foundational courses. Essentially, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be combining index and match to replace the purpose of a VLOOKUP. And that's going to offer several different benefits. For one, we won't have to hard code a column index. In other words, match is going to automatically identify our column headers, find the right match in the lookup table, and pull in values from the correct columns. Second, our lookup values won't need to live in the first column of the table array in the same way that they do with the VLOOKUP. They can live anywhere in the array that we're referencing. And then third, it will give us more flexibility for complex situations like trying to find the second or third instance of a match, which we'll cover in a separate pro tip. So let's try to visualize what's going on here before we jump into our demo. Consider a data set like this. We've got raw data in columns A through C, we're looking at revenue by store by year. And what we're trying to do is populate columns D, E, and F to bring in the city, state, and country based on a lookup table like this one. We've got information about each store ID, a label, an address, a city, a state, and a country. Now to see how this is all wired up, let's pay attention to one particular cell, like D4 for instance, which is pulling in the city name of Bremerton. And you'll see this pretty complex index and match function right there in the formula bar, but essentially here's what's going on. We're telling Excel to index the entire range of potential values from our table array below, and then using match functions to isolate the specific row that we want and the specific column to land at one individual value. So the first match function is looking for the store ID number, in this case, number three, within column I from our table array. It's finding that store ID in the third row beneath the headers and telling Excel, all right, this third row is where I want to live. This is where we're going to pull our values from for the index function. And then a very similar process happens with the second match function, which determines our column index, except in that case, we're looking for the city name or the header name in D1 within row one or the header row of our table array. In this case, we find that city header, we match that header name in the fourth column, and that tells our index function we need a value from column number four. So together, those two match functions are telling the index to move down to that third row and over to that fourth column and returning the intersecting result, which in this case is Bremerton. And that's the value that gets pulled back into our table up top into cell D4. So definitely tricky to get a hang of at first, but a really powerful combination of functions to use. So common use cases here, populating many lookup columns without having to manually update the formulas and those column index numbers, and two, working with more complex scenarios, like I mentioned, uh, for instance, lookups that may have many-to-many -many matches and multiple matches in that table array. So let's jump into Excel and practice writing one of these index match functions. All right, so in our pro tip workbook, Look for combining index and match. It's a green tab in our formula tips. You can link straight to it. And here we've got our revenue data by store by year in columns A through C. And these three columns that we want to populate using a lookup function. We want to pull city, state, and country for each store ID based on this lookup table here in columns H through M. So for the sake of demonstration, let's start with a simple VLOOKUP formula first and see how that goes. So we're gonna look up the store ID from B2. We're gonna fix just the column B because that's where that store ID will always live. We're gonna look it up within the table array. And note, I can't start in column H because that's not my lookup. I gotta start in column I. So I'm gonna pull I2 through M11, press F4 to fix that reference. And for the city column here, I wanna return the value from the first, second, third column over. That's my column index number. And my range lookup is exact match because I want to match the exact store ID in that column I. 
So that populates Acapulco, which looks good. You can apply it down and everything is functioning as expected. And now here's how most people would continue with this. We need to populate two more columns, state and country. You could drag this formula over and because we've set our references properly, all we need to do is change the column index from the third column to the fourth for state and from the third to the fifth for country. And there we go, we can grab those two, apply them down, and we've populated all of these cells properly in a matter of minutes using a traditional VLOOKUP function. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. VLOOKUP is incredibly powerful. The only catch is that what if we had to populate 100 columns instead of just three? Now all of a sudden, updating all of those column index numbers manually starts to feel like a much more tedious headache. Now one option is to replace the column index with a match and combine VLOOKUP with match, which in this case would work just fine. The only downside, remember, is that we would still have to be referencing that lookup, that store ID, in the first column of the table array. So let's go ahead and delete these VLOOKUP functions. I want to show you the index match approach as an alternative. So we're going to start with an index. That's always how we start because we're telling Excel we want to grab one value from this entire array. And now we can include column H as well and we'll fix that reference. And now the only two arguments that we care about here, we need to tell the index which row to pull from and which column to pull from within that array. And remember from the demo, we're gonna use a match function in each of those cases. So to identify the proper row, we're gonna say let's match the store ID here in B2 and we'll fix the column. And where are we looking for the store ID? Well, we're looking for the store ID in the table array where our store IDs live, which is column I, F4 to fix that in, use a zero for exact match, and then close off that first match function. That's our row number that we're gonna feed into our index. The only other piece we need is the column number. Again, we're gonna take a very similar approach here, except this time we're gonna match our header name, which is currently city, and we're gonna fix just the row this time because our headers always live in row one, and where are we looking to match that header? Well, we're looking to match it in the header row from our lookup array h1 through m1 f4 to fix that one zero for exact match close that match function close the entire index function and press enter so there you go we get acapulco again and now here's the beauty of it if we take acapulco drag it over boom we've populated state and country automatically without having to touch those column index numbers and like i mentioned that id or that lookup value does not need to live in the first column. In this case, it lived in the second column. And that means that we can do things like this and say, instead of country, give me the store label. And there you go, it's gonna pull the correct labels, even though those were to the left of the store ID that we were looking up, which is something that would be impossible with a VLOOKUP function. So there you go, quick crash course in combining index and match to create more flexible lookup functions.